Hello everybody, welcome into Castle of Alchemist Prologue. Uh, you can find the link to that in the description. This is a sort of Orcs Must Die tower defense, but 2D in this really cute little uh, uh, 2D style. We have these frozen invaders, literally causing giant ice crystals to blast up and obliterate uh, our Alchemist Castle. And there's quite a, bo quite a lot of lore. There was a ton uh, going on all over the place. In terms of cutscenes, I've skipped past through those and the tutorial because, like, they were kind of long. They were, they were, they were pretty lengthy. Um, lots of dialogue. So we've gone through all that, and now we're gonna uh, get started here. Before this wave is uh, gonna start, we're in a mission right now. These guys are gonna run forward, these bad guys, and they're gonna start here. And then it's even telling us they're gonna die here, which is cool. So uh, I like these kind of hand-drawn arrows. It's very cute. Um, so they're going to make it to here where we've set up our walls and our spike trap and they're going to break and die. Uh, we've also set this sort of chandelier trap. I don't know what it does. I'm going to assume it's going to break down and explode and uh, be in general just kind of mean and nasty to people. And I don't know. Why don't we throw in a couple more spike traps? That sounds like a good plan. Now, that is only one part of the game. When we hit next wave, you can see we don our armor and we are full on medieval doom guy. We have a blunderbuss cannon. You know, if you're like an Ogres fan and Warhammer, like this is really relatable. We have a shoulder mounted ultimate cannon. We've got a hammer that we can use to just blast through dudes. We have special abilities that just, I mean, look at that go. While our cannon is reloading. So like you, you're pretty strong. Like you are definitely a force on the battlefield, which is why I kind of liken it to Orcs Must Die a little bit, right? Um, we can climb over our own walls and fire past them. So, uh, I'm liking... Whoa, they cut through that fast. <laughs> um, I'm surprised that uh, they they chewed through that wall so quickly. Okay, 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 okay. Every, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Set down some more traps. Drink a health potion, which we do by pressing E. Okay. All right. So that was the end of a wave. That was a lot. It was a lot. Uh, but what happened here? We got Deathless, Adamant Defense. What, what do these mean? This is a cool victory screen, by the way. Uh, in fact, we've got these kind of wax seals and the non-intelligible script on the, you know, uh, parchment, the uh, vellum sort of experience. Um it's good. Uh, these wax seals feel very accomplishy. That's good. Kind of harkens Warhammer to a certain degree. Like if you got scrolls with this sort of cursive writing and then wax seals and skulls, sorry, people are gonna liken it to Warhammer. It's just the way it goes. Um, so uh, I like it though. I think it's uh, doing a good job of communicating to the player what they have done. So we have Deathless, 10% more resources were awarded if you manage to survive the wave without falling, okay. Uh, more resources awarded if you did not allow any enemies to pass in the wave. And if, uh, if you did both of the above, then you also get this one. Okay. I would like different images on these wax seals. I get that, like, the arrow is maybe the alchemist, you know, logo. But it feels weird having that same thing present when, when like, the icon is clearly such a big part of this. Like, if, there's n if they're not going to be unique icons, then probably have the icon here. Okay, so I also... Oh, man. See, I'm already getting sidetracked. Before, uh, when I was going through the tutorial, I was like, oh, there's some interesting things we can talk about here. Interesting things we can talk about here. And now I'm getting sidetracked by something I haven't seen before. Uh, I want to talk about spacing here. Because they've done something interesting, and I think it can be amped up even more. So if we go over to Figma. We have our thing here, right? Uh... Let's let's take a look at how they're doing this here. You can see the amount of space that they've created is trying to communicate a hierarchy, which is good. It's exactly what it should be, right? I'm going to make these different colors for every different spacing that we have so we can more clearly visualize it, right? I'm going to bring this down here, and that is right there. Kind of 
curious. Is that the same height? No, it's not. It is different. So we have three different spaces here. This tall space here is saying it is separate from this top. This wave report one out of two, this is a section in it, right? And then we have this smaller gap here communicating that deathless and adamant defense are related to each other. And then we have a bigger gap saying flawless flow is separate from these two, right? So they've created these different groups of content through their use of spacing, which is very good. Good for them. Well done. What I think we can do to amp that up even more, you know me, we're going to get some masks going. I'm going to mask this all. Mask. We're going to shunt it. Oops. Every time I do this. <laughs> there we go. And then on this image, we're going to bring this back. There we go. We're just going to bring it down so it's in line with this, right? We want there to be a consistent, strong line between these two. So we create a visual shape for the viewer's eyes. So just by shoving that down, I feel like we have a better um, alignment with things here. When it's up here, it just starts, you have this weird rag that the eye doesn't really know what to do with. Once again, this is all just in my opinion. They may have very good reasons for doing it the way that they did. As a first impressions, this is what I would say. As well, it feels like there's probably a way we can communicate this idea of this being the sum of these two even more. And I, I kind of am wondering, what if, uh, what if we grab this, mask it, of course. Uh, no, 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 not the image. The whole mask group, thank you. Bring this to the front. And then what if we kind of made it larger in some way, right? Or what if instead of being larger, what if, because uh, I like this being lower down. Um, what if we did a different typographical treatment on it? Um, and, and I'll go with just, you know, some random font that's somewhat approximating what they're doing here. Um, all right, that is not the same font, but it's, you know, it's going to be close enough. Where we can at least kind of get the idea. So we'll mask this. Uh, and this is me just kind of playing around with things, right? We talk a lot about typography. Um, so what if we did, oh, uh, that's too dark. Can't use that color. Um, what if we use this uh, bright one over here, right? And to me, that's starting to say even more, this is a different sort of thing, right? Um, and I really want that icon to be bigger, you know? I really like it. I really like the stamp to be bigger. What happens if we kind of expand this out? And it's gonna look a little janky. But that's okay. Happy little accidents, you know? I mean, honestly, maybe you even could break the border of, of this. Or, okay, here's another interesting idea. Instead of having this flawless flow section even, you could even take it an diff entirely different route. And, uh, oops. Have like a big uh, sort of stamp come on in here. Like if we had, you know, some sort of ribbon that would get attached uh, to uh, the uh, paper, right? Oh, that's so gross, whatever. <laughs> and then the, uh, the seal is on there, right? It's like, hey, extra special congratulations, you did it, slap, perfect, right? Uh, you kind of get the idea. There's some other treatments that maybe they could do to communicate that a little bit more. Is that worth the time? This is the thing we always have to consider with game dev. Is that worth the opportunity cost of working on other things? Eh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. 
Uh, so, um, I, I, I think a lot of this works fairly well, right? We have, um, very clear sections here. I don't think the text is distracting too much. I might play around with maybe reducing the contrast on it a little bit because it does feel like it's a higher contrast than this text is up here. I'm kind of curious about that. Let's, let's check our contrast plugins. Um, so we're going to grab a box and make it this color, and then we're gonna make a box and make it, oops, not text, a box. Make it this color. Okay. So that is uh, failing contrast, which it should. It should fail contrast. We're at a 1.9. But what happens if then we make the box for this? 3.5. Okay, so it is better contrast. That's interesting to me. I kind of, I, I am a little bit surprised by that. And it's like almost twice as good contrast too. That's a lot better. Still not great for small type, but it's okay for large. That's what that's saying. Large type, which is what this is. Um, I almost want dread level to be all full width to cover the bar, right? And then, okay, hold on. We're going to do one more thing on this screen before moving on. I kind of want to experiment. What would happen if... What would happen if we made dread level full width? Whoop. And then we kind of created... Well, I guess we can't do that, can we? We'd have to do um, a, a new like border. Grab our dark brown over there. Because what, what I'm trying to do is make a firm box right through our typography. Because I don't think that's happening right now. If we kind of bring this box up, we're getting a lot of space here. Well, I guess that's just because it's center aligned. They probably are trying to do this. Uh, which is how this typography is maybe trying to reinforce that feeling of that box shape. But you have a lot of things breaking the shape. You have this type coming in, this uh, skull coming in. So that nice, tidy square shape that they probably had in their wireframes is gone, right? It has been subsumed in the embellishments. Um, That's, a, that's an interesting conundrum, because the embellishments are cool. You definitely don't want to lose those, but you also want to reinforce uh, that feeling. So, I don't know, maybe wider, um, oops, wider uh, borders might fix it. And you just leave a little bit of a gap between them. And then you can even leave that uh, these uh, more raggedy ones to be shorter. Scrunch that in. So that's 190. This should now be 190. Drag these down. I don't know. Once again, is it worth it? Is it worth spending the time on? Probably not. This is just kind of for our enrichment to say, like, here's some other ways we can kind of explore for this, right? Uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's dive back into the game, shall we? Interesting to kind of play around with those things and see how might I do it? How might I uh, adjust things? Continue doesn't feel like a button. That feel needs to feel a little bit more like a button, I think, especially having some sort of hover state. Where'd our sound go? Oh, and that was just for the wave? I thought that was, like, for the whole mission. Whoa, that... That's a lot for one wave. Okay, interesting. And we get to keep our stuff that we have. Um, Let's throw some more of these guys down. I've learned my lesson. We, we definitely need to have some multiple um, sections here. And we're out of money. We got our raiders and our swordsmen that are immune and resistant to ice and weak to, uh, what, sandworms? What, what, what's that weakness all about? What is that thing? I can't hover over it. So this is progressive disclosure. This is good. It's a good thing that they have this little pop-up saying, look, here's a lot more information on them. 
but these icons are not explanatory enough to tell me what they are. The ice one, pretty good. Ice with the shield, I'm gonna assume that they're immune. Or at least resistant, right? Weakness, I got no clue what that thing is. Is that like a piece of lasagna? Is it, I mean, it's, it looks to be some sort of monster. Am I gonna get monsters on my team? Until I discover what that icon is, I have no way to know what it is. So I'd love to have some way to have that displayed, right? Okay, let's go. Let's doom guy it up. Come on out. Bop. <laughs> I like these guys. This is fun. So, are the shields blocking the bullets? Whoa, that's actually really loud. That's quite loud. Hold on. Let me throw the volume way down on that. Okay. Ooh, there's a long cooldown on those. Ooh, ooh. Potions. Okay. Blast. Specials, there we go. Cannon, there we go. It does get kind of hectic. I, 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 I like that and appreciate it. Um, we had some sort of counter go up on the side there. I'm not sure what that was. Was that like a combo meter? Uh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, these bullets do not, uh, from our overhead turrets, do not seem to be hurting the shield guys. And maybe it's just not displaying health? Oh. Maybe it's not displaying health. Maybe it is not um, actually hurting him. I don't know. Let's let's let this. Yeah, it's not showing the health bars on the guys that are getting um, weakened as well, or that don't have shields. Excuse me. So I'm inclined to think it's probably just not displaying it. Oh, we're gonna die. We're gonna die here. Just spam. Oh no, we have a stamina bar I didn't know about. Shoot. <laughs> Oh, and that guy's gonna get through. Darn, okay. All right, there we go. Oh, we have a new ending screen. Interesting, we got one skull instead of the full four skulls we could have gotten. Int okay, I like this. I like this graph. This is showing you like how effective you were in different areas and what your emphasis was. That's neat. Any way we can tell a player we are observing how you were playing the game, especially in relation to other play styles, I think that's a really powerful tool to encourage people to try other things. And I'm always talking about when you have numbers, have some way to communicate magnitude. This communicates magnitude. Big, big fan of this thing. This is rad. Um, we have a, a stamp here for some reason. I don't know why. And then we have a hover over 320 instead of 419. I don't know what that is. Why are these numbers different? 1950 instead of 1610, 320 instead of 419. And here we have labels. So like clearly they are not averse to putting labels in their popover text, in their tooltips. Uh, I'm curious, very curious about that. So this is the, how much damage we did. This is how much our items did. And this is how much our traps did. So we did way more damage than our traps, which lines up. Uh, we get some loot and all that sort of stuff. Oh, this is a whole table. Interesting. Instead of making them unique tooltips, they just threw it all into a table. Hmm. And the question mark is different. Wow, there's a lot condensed into here. Uh, so we got these two, but then we needed Grenadier. Finish the level with four equipped vials. Oh. So, like, don't use your health potions? And then Thor's Wrath, kill 25 invaders with electric. I didn't know those were challenges on there. I wonder if I could have known that. Now, we do have a good signifier here leading the player forward. Um, cool. Ooh, nice little animation there. Apprentice Gilbert has been rescued. We can now craft things. Hooray! Uh, we're gonna kind of skip past a lot of the dialogue. Sorry. Um, good to, uh, text boxes for what it's worth. Very, uh... Classic in layout. I like how they have the characters breaking the border of the boxes. It's nice. Um, I like how they have them talking in there. That's a nice little touch as well. Okay. Here you can review the details and select your mutations or combat training. Yeah, this is way Warhammer inspired. 
Greetings, Commander. I'm grateful for your rescue of those lenses and everything. I would not believe them if they said they weren't inspired by Warhammer. No, that's true. I would, I would absolutely believe them if they said they weren't. But it is an interesting, if they weren't, interesting converging evolution sort of experience, right? Uh, I'm grateful for your rescue. I will be responsible for crafting experimental warfare. Great. Uh, you can choose which schematic to use as a base for crafting so we can build our hammer and the blunderbuss so we're going to get more weapons. That's cool. I like that. Um, and you can make better versions. So, you, so it's not just blast hammer that's unlocked that's done. Now you can make like a tier 4 blast hammer versus a tier 1. Okay, got it. Uh, okay. Might change the type from here. I don't know what types are. Okay. Inventory limit of items you can keep. You can see how many items you have in your inventory here. That's an interesting place to put that. Um, because if it's here, that tells me it's related to this item. Whereas really it's related to my character. I, I would expect a carry limit to be up here. Or something, you know? Unless this was going to have a variable amount of space it took up. Like if this was going to do for space, then uh, yeah, I'd probably want my backpack's information down close to wherever that information is going to be. Um, or at least I could see that being reasonable. You can equip your gear. Wow, this is quite developed. Jeez. You can dismantle unwanted items. Cool. Uh, highly suggest crafting a new blast hammer. Sure, let's make a new blast hammer so we can turn these ingredients on or off and that changes our odds. I like how that live updates. If they wanted another opportunity for polish, I'm sure this is on the developers' minds already, but just for us to discuss it, instead of having it be an automatic flip on and off, it could be a slight, very, like, tenth of a second animation sliding those bars up and down. Maybe a little spark or something to change it. So we can make... One, two, three different types of hammers. We have a furnace hammer, an electric hammer, and a blast hammer. Rad. Cool. Uh, let's try the furnace hammer. We're fighting ice enemies. Let's make fire, right? Let's do fire. Um, so this is the better stats we're going to have, I guess? Instead of what? Instead of our blast hammer that we already have, or... Based on the equipment, on the resources, it must be, uh, and this is weird too. See how it changes the text there to very rare material instead of furnace hammer? Why is the text coming here? Why is this not like a pop-up or, or something? Like it's weird that we have very rare material, but then all the other things that are related here. I, w I would probably say very rare material. Wait, we have precious minerals showing up there. Why don't we have very rare material just up next to precious minerals? You see that? In the tier chance window, also weird that tier chance window is getting taken over completely instead of having something pop over it. But like, I, I, I don't know. I guess I can understand it because you have a bunch of text here. And then if you do another pop over on top of that, it's going to be like a text window on top of text. And that's awkward. But uh, maybe have it fly out to the right instead or something. I don't know. Interesting progressive disclosure decisions, I guess is what I'll say. Let's craft. Ooh, you got to. Okay, this is cool. So you get the little uh, the little animation there with the bubbles and everything, filling up the vial. Feel very mad scientisty, but then also you got this guy up here, crunch nice, good good. And notice how it didn't uh, go over all the way. It just kind of like primed it up and then slam for a really satisfying end. That was good. Um, conditions: water puddle conducts electricity and can be frozen via chill to apply. So oh, and here's our lasagna monster. Fire damage can ignite. Oil puddles? Explosive gas or oiled enemies? Is that supposed to be an oil puddle? Like, on a wall? Or something? I don't know what that icon is supposed to be still. I mean, I understand what it means, kind of, now. I guess it's just fire damage, but... Man, I don't... I, I don't understand the, the picture there. Okay, great. Craft. Uh, so we have hydro puddle on hoop. Free core activation, increased core damage. Cool. I don't know what hoop means. Are we going to get a hula hoop? That'd be fun. Uh, let's, uh, okay. Actually, I want to go back to the workshop. Or, or rather the... Um, ooh. Do we want to build new traps, actually? I want to check out the mutations. But also... Sprinkler trap. This is cool. Um, how do I unlock these? That's what I want to know. How do I get to my variants? Okay. 
Are these different tabs I can click on? No. They're just, it's just a graphical thing, I guess. Okay. Great, let's go back to the war room. I want to check out those mutations real quick. Ar Armamentitit... Mutate. Yes. I mean, that is such a space marine right there, right? I mean, come on. Uh, we can improve vision. So these are our statistical buffs. Increase stamina. Uh, get some uh, life steal a little bit. Dodge chance. Okay, cool. Resistance to interruption. Our poise meter. And then we have... Um, upgrading our equipment. So, increased radius of turrets, um, critical chance of weapons. Okay, this is cool. Reduces stamina cost. Rad. Let's get some healing. Oh, and did we just run out of money? Was that all of our money that we just had? Yeah, looks like it. Okay, cool. I like it. This is cool. Lots of good set dressing here. One thing we talked about, um, or that I was looking at, is this screen before. Let's Let's jump back to our UI design here. When you have this deploy to level button, or, sorry, let me actually explain what's happening here. You select which mission you want to go on, right? Of any of these missions, and it will tell you which enemies and which equipment you're gonna have, all that sort of stuff. That's all great. The thing that was weird to me was this button right here, deploy to level, because it looks the same style as all the other buttons, right? I mean, I guess it is a different style because these are kind of depressed already, and this is more beveled outwards. So in that sense, it's a different style, but does it really catch the eye? Not really. Is anyone gonna look at that and really strongly know that's where I'm supposed to go instead of here? If they do, it's only because of the size. When there is something they can do to just make this a lot easier on themselves, in my opinion, once again, just in my opinion, we do this, grab that, control M, oops, slide this over, Move our guy over here. Oops. Uh, don't even need to do a mask here. I can just crop this. Uh, crop. There we go. Hey, look. Now that button, the happy path forward, is in the spot where people expect the forward action to be, right? Forward action, bottom right. That's where you expect that button to be. Left feels like cancel. Now you do have now this button. You could um, go ahead and uh, move that. Oops. There we go. You could then move that up here and integrate it into the frame even or have it break the frame and just have this be black, right? To me, this screen now makes a lot more sense. This is going in the read order, right? Of the information that I need in order to make my decision, making the decision, and then uh, deploying to level. And in fact, if we wanted to take this a step further, what I would do is, come on, there we go. Grab our rectangle, mask, and then, Grab our most recent mask, which is right there. Slide it over here. And we swap these places. I'm gonna tell you why I feel that way in just a second. Oh shoot, did I, <laughs> I double masked it, shoot. Okay. Uh, control C, control V. You and you. There we go, slide over, and then we grab our mask that we made invisible. There we go. Okay, so now we have our action that we have to take when we enter this scene, and then we have the information, and once we verify, yes, this is the action we want to take, it leads directly into the deploy button, right? So before, excuse me, we have it in reverse order, right? We, we come into the screen and we go all the way to the right and pick things and then move to the left. That's a kind of a awkward direction to move in for Western audiences because we read top down, left to right. Uh, if you if this were developed by uh, some uh, you know Japanese or, or Korean developers or something, all of a sudden this layout makes a lot more sense to me because they have the reverse cultural expectations, right? 
But for Western audiences, and I believe this is, I don't know, it feels Western made. Team Machiavelli. I mean, come on. That's got to be. <laughs> Anyways, um, this to me reads a lot better for Western audiences. Uh, and then honestly, oh, man, I don't know. This loadout has also been kind of weird to me. I would almost want to see the loadout brought over to the right, but then you kind of have a weird thing. Like, I understand if they wanted to have this big space of the war room to feel very integrated, build that verisimilitude. Like, I totally get that. This works. It just feels a little awkward. It feels like it gets missed easily. So you could try and explore some different options, moving it around. You could also explore with having there be a two-stepping screen. Well, I don't necessarily like that, like where, where you choose your mission and then you choose your equipment and those are two different screens because I think you're going to want to be choosing your equipment based on the mission. So you'd be carrying the mission information over anyways into that second screen. And, uh, uh, you know, it gets a little messy. I understand why, why, why they would have landed on this. Okay, let's head back into the game. So these are where we find our challenges. So I missed that when I jumped in here. I didn't notice these. Okay, very cool. We also have this difficulty slider, which is cool. So we can decide, you know, do we want it hardcore or or not? Uh, uh, see, they keep on doing this weird thing where they swap out part of a dialog box, but not the whole thing. And so it just feels really confusing. Like I was over here, I was like, I want to know what the difficulty change does for me. And then I see, oh, something is changing up here. And it just says change the difficulty setting, but then frozen corner, like is frozen corner some indicator of difficulty? Is that what the label is for this difficulty? No, it's just the name of the map. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> uh, but I do like this. You get more resources and stuff if you go harder. So there's incentives to like go back and grind out old maps, try and get these challenges done. Do that. Like, I like that. I like how they're building in that repeatability into the game. I just think it can be communicated a little bit more clearly. Okay. Um, as well, if these are going to be recurring challenges, let's make some icons, man. Let's make some icons for these. If we're going to have uh, up close in other missions, give me an icon in front of this so I can quickly scan and see, oh, yeah, this one is there and this one is there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to quickly jump through all these. Now that I have my electrical weapon, I'm going to jump through and see all the different electrical ones. Now I have to read every single line entry. It's going to be depending on pattern recognition. Um, that's all a big bummer. Now, we do have our enemies up here. I'm seeing we have a new faction, which is super rad. I, I was wondering that earlier, if we were going to have different factions. That's great. I am bummed now, because the super cool weapon I just made is fire damage, which these guys seem to be immune to. So we're not going to be using our cool new weapon, unfortunately. Uh, let's, uh, let's dive in. Let's jump in a level. I don't think we have any other equipment or anything we can do. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Oh, I love that loading animation. That spinning wheel, that's so simple, and it communicates a whole lot. I mean, that's, that's good. It's good. And then it spins in the opposite direction. It's good. It's good stuff. So I'm just realizing that's us, and these are our alchemy buddies that are engineering their super soldier friend. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So we have a, a heightened tower we can build. Ballista tower. Oh, see, now, now we get... Okay, watch this. We're getting this indicator of what it can and cannot shoot. That's good. That's great. I build it and I realize, oh shoot, is it going to hit this tile? I don't know. Is it going to hit anything over here? How do I find out? I can't. They. I need that. I need a way to verify, oh yeah, this is going to hit over here or not. Uh, okay. So this guy's going to be blasting kind of everything in this sort of a radius at least. Let's get uh, some traps going. This is a sprinkler trap oil. Applies oiled to enemies and leaves an oil puddle. That's... Oh, I wish I knew what oil did. Let's throw an oil trap right there. Maybe it'll slow them down. That's a guess. I wish it could tell me. Have oil as a keyword that I can then investigate further. Mouse over or press a button in order to expand more details while I'm hovering. Something so I can figure out what oil does without having to just like experientially deal with it. Okay, we're gonna build a barricade. Doot, doot, doot. Now, let's actually do a couple layers of barricade and then we'll get our spike traps. Oh, we can't put spike traps on stairs, no, oh, shoot. All right, well, we're poor now. Let's start the wave. 
So we don our gear, and we'll get teleported outside of the room. Feels like there needs to be a run animation there. I'm sure that's just something we haven't gotten to yet. Oh, we can't vault over double layers of walls. Oh, that's another thing I didn't know. Oh, but we can jump over there. That's good. And then climb down and blast. Good. Let's uh, throw down some of our own um, traps that are, or I, I don't know, turrets instead of traps? I don't know how to classify these. Number one is our grenade. I need to remember that. What's Q? Oh, right. That's our superpower. Yeah, that's our cannon. That doesn't really look like the cannon. I'm not going to lie. Because it's, like, pointed down. So, uh, it just doesn't read to me as the cannon. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay. 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 Play and catch up. Play and catch up. Everything's fine. Great. Look how fine everything is. Look how fine this all is. Just smash, smash, smash. Throw down another turret. Okay. Go back to our cannon. Get the herd. Get the hammer back out. Try and keep people in this kill zone. Boy, they've got a lot of dudes coming. I wish I could know. Oh, I was about to say, I wish I could know um, how many we have left. And it looks like that's probably it. So we have what? One more wave after this? Or is this the last wave? Communicating end states is always so hard. End states and how you start counting are always a little difficult. So I'm seeing them get oiled, but I didn't necessarily notice them slowing down at all. And so I know we can use oil to light them on fire, which is cool, but these guys are like resistant to fire, so that's, that's not really helpful. Okay, that was a good wave. Very good job. Dread level three. I don't know what dread level does. Uh, as you achieve higher combo scores and times your dread level increases. Each level of dread increases the amount of resources you receive by 10%. Total combo count. Required combo point for maximum dread level is 1750. I see. Okay. Required time for maximum dread level is one. Okay. So this is telling us that that hover over we had earlier that I was confused about. Like, why are these two different times and two different combos? It's because it's telling us what was the what we needed to hit. They could have clarified that in those tooltips. Um, in fact, that feels like information that could be on the screen somehow. I'd be curious to explore that a little bit. We don't really have the time to do that right now, but I think that's kind of interesting to explore that UI. Um, what's interesting is by saying we we are incentivizing you to not spend time and to have lots of combos, is what that is implicitly saying is this game is built around, uh, yeah, I can't build on top of that. Uh, it's built around, uh, kill zones because you want everything to die really fast all at the same time so you want your kill zone ideally to be right up here which is another reason why i need to know how long how far this ballista shoots <laughs> can i set up a kill zone over here and have that work because the more time they spend running the less likely it is i'm going to get that maximum score all right let's check out our um our other things here ceiling dart trap let's throw you down and we could kind of start weakening them, I think is the idea. So they'll start getting hit by this AoE and slowly get weakened, weakened, weakened. And then we'll start... Looks like they're going to cut the corner, so we probably don't need any other spike traps over there. We can just maybe throw some over here. And then that will cover our bases. Uh, and then we're out of money. Let's do it. Another thing I want to experiment with is... I like these numbers, too. They're kind of studded... Uh, buckler sort of situation. Oh gosh, when you hover over them, you get their, look at this. When I hover over someone, I get their health bar right under the 25 in the top middle of the screen. When, when is that going to matter? These guys are dying so fast. I mean, maybe there's like elites or something, but like, why are we not just displaying the information on the screen? Why are we putting it on hover when you're aiming with your mouse? on a billion things and constantly losing that focus. I don't know. I'm not sold on that pattern at all. All right. Let's throw some more uh, cooldown stuff down. Blast, 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 blast. Oh, and this is the answer to my question of, is this where we are at or where we're going? This, I like that they're having the liquid draw down. That tells me that it is where we are going. That's very good. Throw a grenade. Very good, very good. I like it. I mean, there's a lot of good design here to be appreciated. Can 
We got our combo meter going up there, I'm assuming, is what that is. 23 combo, 27 combo, 29 combo, 30 combo. Okay. Throw another grenade. Blast, 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 blast. Let's uh, do hammer time. There we go. And cannon. Boom! <laughs> feels good. That cannon, they, they did get the right juice on that. That feels pretty dang good. So, like, yeah, they have the health bar sometimes. Like, when you hit them, it shows a health bar if they're not dead. But it doesn't do that when your traps hit them. Which is weird, because, like, I set up a zone where they're supposed to be getting weakened over time, right? So I want to know how weak are they? Where, where are the areas that can apply weaker hits and knock stuff out quickly? Like, it just felt... Feels weird, that decision. Um, okay. Finish the level with three equipped booby traps, which I literally couldn't right now. Have dual mix combo. I don't know what that means either. There's a lot to explore here. This red is an interesting choice. The level and the experience sharing this red font color. Because I haven't seen that red font color anywhere else. I guess it's maybe supposed to tie into the seals, but it's a different shade of red. So I don't know. Feels a little bit weird. Um, I'm not convinced that that contrast is quite high enough, but maybe it is. You know, I've been wrong today on contrast. Um, but I, I think this is a space where typography could could be refined, right? We have our header and then our non-header, right? Um, and I think they're even the same size, just different colors. But then we have this huge crushing victory. We have level two, which seems to be a smaller size by just a little bit than the headers. Maybe it's not, but it looks that way. We have the experience, which is a lot bigger, and then these percentages, which seem bigger, and then these resource numbers, which seem smaller. So there's just, like, a lot of different typographical styles in here, and it feels like um, narrowing that down a little bit to maybe uh, having level and the headers and everything all have the same typographical weight. The experience bar, I don't know. I, I wonder if this is a reused element in a lot of other places in the UI that they're showing. Um, having the resources kind of match these numbers maybe would help. Then again, maybe it would detract. I, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of good questions to explore there, at the very least. Okay. Uh, we're about 40 minutes in. We'll keep going for a little bit longer. Let's do some meta progression upgrades and uh, then maybe do uh, one more run and we'll kind of see how far this takes us. We have, what, one, one what? I don't know what one is. Um, can I upgrade this? Oh, I can, even though it's already level one. So when we get this to level five, if we kill 10 enemies within three seconds, we rage for 15 seconds, ignore stamina cost, take half damage, and have 20% life steal. That's cool. Also, are you noticing the, the hover effect on our guy? So we get, like, the, uh, the kidneys actually show up on the character. That's cool. Not happening on the spine, though, unfortunately. Or the eyes, but it is happening with the lungs. So there's some inconsistencies there. Um, that makes me think that maybe this is a prologue, right? I wonder if this is just, like, not built in yet. That very well could be. Let's upgrade our, our kidneys again, because, you know, healing is good. And uh, craft. Actually, before we craft, let's go to the war room and see what is our next mission. Ice. Okay, good. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that our fire weapon was actually going to be usable. So now we have saw blades. That's rad. I still want to know how we get access to these other things. I, great. It would be good to not also have to jump back into the war room. Like if if the workshop and the arm, armamentarium could just link to each other, right? We have the war room here, but then we also have workshops. So we can just go directly between the different crafting shops without having this in-between space. Uh, armory. Let's equip our cool new hammer. Furnace hammer three. We're going to craft. Um, can we get a fire blunderbuss? Oh, a dragon blunderbuss releases an extra fire explosion that deals 300 damage. Of course. Oh, but we don't have enough precious materials. Darn. Let's go with the revolver. Revolving blunderbuss. That sounds fun, and it's a little bit different. Let's use our, our resources here. Conditions. Saws travel across ground and go through enemies till it hits an obstacle. Oh, we got a, a level three one. That's good. What do you mean saws? Why Why is this showing up? Oh, release saws on acrobatics? Whoa, that's cool. 
cluster bomb on acrobatics? So, okay, so these conditions, if they're mapping to here, they need to get moved down. And they need to tie in somehow, right? Uh, we need to have some visual tie-in. Moving it down will help so it's uh, closer. And maybe even move it on top of the frame so that it looks even closer. But uh, this is super cool. Maybe there's going to be so many that they need like a full two columns of space. I don't know. Uh, several small bombs are released around impact on acrobatics. And health burst restores a certain amount of hit points uh, after 25 kills. So we'll, we'll get a 10% chance to gain 15 stamina after 25 kills. I don't know how we would know that's after 25 kills without um, this pop-up. That doesn't have that information in there. Um, so some language could be clarified, but this is uh, this is very cool. Oh, we need to equip it too. Ugh. Let's equip it. Here we go. Cool. Uh, I'm excited about that. That's cool. I love those those proccing effects, right? I'm a big fan of that. That is gonna totally change how I'm gonna kind of explore this. Um, see, and I was looking for that deploy button down there still, even though I've done this like three times. Okay. So we get Swordsmen, Raiders, and Armored Raiders. They're even stronger. And immune to bludgeoning damage, maybe? Headshots? I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Um, weak to time? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, moss? I don't, I don't know what that weakness is. Poison, maybe? Maybe that's like an acid? Maybe it's acid. Okay, so we've got these two guys coming in. Um, we can build a, a good ballista tower here. So it is, oh, and I can't even move the camera when I'm in this mode. Oh, so I can't even see how high up it goes. My goodness. Let's build that there. I think the, the easy way to do this is to wait for them to funnel in here and build a kill zone. But because we have that combo system and the time system uh, rewarding us differently, it would be more efficient if we could kill both of them up front. So that is an interesting uh, duality that they're creating with their level design. Normally, I'm not a big fan of things that kind of encourage you to rush stuff down unless it's really intentionally be, uh, being used. Because then stuff like walls and everything just kind of become useless. You're just going to pump damage the whole time. But if you can design for it and create an interesting tension, then I think that's totally valid. So I'm, I'm curious to see how this kind of plays out. Um, let's do a saw blade, a wall and um, spike traps, and then a ceiling trap. So we're going full kill zone right there. Can I do N to do next wave? Because this N is golden. Yes, I can, that is a hockey, good. I was gonna say, if that's not a hockey, they're really communicating that it's a hockey with that extra thing. So, where's my, uh, where's my saw blades? Oh, I need to have it out, maybe? No, it, it was the revolver blunderbuss that on acrobatics, it's supposed to, like, give me... Oh, there we go. So we're going to be doing a lot of this. <laughs> Overall, I will say it feels very similar to the last gun that we had. Oh, can I hold it in? Oh. So we do get a bit of a burst fire instead. Get back. Back. The flames of Arnor shall not avail you. You shall not pass. Cannon. Boom. <laughs> Feels good. Grenade. Oh, man. This is getting wild. No, no, no. Get back. Get back. Okay, set up a more kill zone. Use our, oh dear, furnace ability. Okay. Dive down. Go full Gimli at Helm's Deep over there. Okay, okay. Gun, there we go. This is quite satisfying. The, the swapping between different weapons, I find myself doing a good amount. Um, the knockback on the melee weapon uh, being really great. The, the gun to kind of soften things up at a distance and to chase down guys that are slipping through like it's working i think it's working really well i think they've built a good system here cool we got it 10 seconds early and with a lot of extra combo go team so we get a lot of resources now to play around with uh let's let's build some more oh and there's our rotate on the mouse wheel okay 
that's an interesting uh, icon. Those circular arrows at the top and bottom almost make me think I'm supposed to rotate my mouse. Um, but I understand they're saying rotate the trap with a middle click. Um, and, and I worked it out. So, like, it's, it's self-explanatory. It's fine. It works, right? Let's throw down a couple of you guys, but then I want to build a lot of walls. And I want to build walls so that I have something to pole vault over. And that's pretty much the only reason they're going to exist is give me something to jump over. So I'm not even trying to block them because they'll just tear it down. Uh, all I want for Christmas are my two front walls. Okay. Can I? Yes. So now I've set up this huge proc laboratory <laughs> of getting health back and doing saw blades. I'm curious if that's going to work. It feels a little jank. I'm kind of curious. I'm also noticing for the first like real time that we have this mini map in the upper right. And that's good. Boom. Nice. Okay. Drop that. Get over here. Yeah. There we go. Cannon. Uh, oh, man. I keep on pressing Q to swap weapons when really I should be doing... Uh, and, and I keep pressing 2 as well to swap weapons instead of what I should be pressing, which is tab. Ta I, I would maybe swap that to be... Or not swap, but add as an option 1 and 2 just because that's such a natural um, mechanism for swapping weapons, right? Uh, or, or the mouse wheel, right? The mouse wheel would also work. These are things uh, that we can learn from uh, in Jacob's Law. Jacob's Law saying it's, it's the anti-fun rule. It is the people spend most of their time on things that are not your thing. So make your thing more like other things. Uh, so on the things that don't matter in games, align with what other people are doing. Don't try and innovate and make some cool funky pattern to like aim. Unless aiming with that funky pattern, like, genuinely is the game. Okay, hammer. There we go, there we go. Get our last health potion. Wow, these guys are mean, but this is the end, so I think we got it. Woo! 108 combo. Look at that. You're, you're still alive? Jeez. <laughs> so that's one thing. When you have the ceiling objects and something is behind them, you may want to, like... Um, obscure the ceiling, like reveal the stuff behind it, right? Make the ceiling object, have a little outline around where stuff is overlapping and, and bring it forward in a transparency of some, of some sort. So we did not do good enough on our combo. Even with 108 combo, that wasn't enough. Wow. Brutal. We have another wave. Ooh, three waves. Three waves. Rough. Okay. Uh, let's rebuild this wall. I like how it reconstructs the uh, beginning and end part and the middles. That's good that it's kind of dynamically reassigning that. Um, let's throw out some more of these guys. And I'm kind of getting to a point now where I don't feel that I have enough information to know when should I use a saw blade versus when should I use a spike trap. Um, it, it feels a little hard for me to determine, ah, yes, this is an ideal location for a saw blade. This is an ideal location for a spike trap. I don't know if they do different damage amounts. I don't know if, if they have different attack rates. Um, all that's uh, a bit rough. Just solo over here for a little bit. Oh, now our stamina's up. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay. Full vault, get saw blades. Grenade. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. The aggro. No. Get away from my wall. All right, there we go. Oh man, that stamina is brutal. Just a dude charging with the flag all by his lonesome. <laughs> So I'm seeing now that they have two different recharge mechanics, which is very clever. So for your guns, you have ammo. For your melee, you have stamina. Those are both doing the same thing. Stamina is reloading your melee weapon. 
And that's very clever because now you have these two different bars to juggle to have a, like 100% uptime on attacking, but you do have to vary it up. And if you go all the way through in one, you are now stuck with the other until the other one recharges. So I, I, I think that's quite clever, to be honest. I, I like that a lot, actually. It's, it's effectively the same system, but presented in a way that feels different. And that's, that's really cool. Alright, our, our, our kill system is doing pretty well over here. Whoops. Yeah, this definitely gets wild and hectic. But I feel really powerful. When, I'm, when I have all these traps running and everything's going and I'm seeing these guys drop, it feels great. And that was one concern that I was having so far is like it felt like it was almost all up to my character. And this is a tricky balance you have to strike on these kinds of games. And it's the same thing with any sort of summoning class, any sort of pet class. Is it the character that's the star of the show or is it the pets that's the star of the show? And a lot of games will get around that with um, allowing you to build into one or the other or a mix. But if you don't necessarily have like skill trees and builds, then it starts to kind of get a little bit tricky right of um how do you oh we got three achievements that time nice shake and not stirred uh deal damage with vials that's our grenades which i didn't use um oh we got the tower smith oh so now you're gonna be what allows us to craft varian towers i'll imagine okay thank you for playing the prologue we hope you enjoyed it cool so that's the end of the prologue nice you can still play any of the levels as well as an endless map and craft unlocked items. Available right now on Steam as early access. Hope to see you there. There we cool. Very cool. Uh, th this is a great experience. Castle of Alchemist prologue. I, I, I think they've done a phenomenal job. I really, really do. Um, I think there are some places that the UI can be tidied up because there's always going to be imperfect things in whatever is built. And uh, as well, you know, we're coming at this not from a let's actually build something, but from a let's learn and talk about how to improve on things. That's a very different perspective, right? When you're thinking about how do we build something, you have to take into account roadmaps and opportunity costs and all these things we have the luxury of not really caring about and technical constraints, all, all sorts of things. So uh, this was awesome. I really appreciate that. Uh, the developers for putting this out and making something special and unique and cool. I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Um, before you head out, Fox Hollow Games is a charitable enterprise that helps people enter the game industry. So we do these analysis videos to kind of level up our skill sets together and practice and get opportunities to explore how we might leverage different design principles. We're holding a game jam in July. Make sure you sign up for that. We'll have the link down in the comments down below in the description. Uh, as well, we have week daily streams where we stream game development and we do more analysis like this and we talk about how to keep on building things together. So with that being said, if that is your jam, like, follow, subscribe on whatever platform you're on. We'll catch you next time.